In this video, we'll show how to install Zorin OS onto a computer that already has an operating system installed. This will create a dual boot system. I've inserted the Zorin OS 7 Core DVD into the drive and have rebooted the computer. Here's the opening screen. Uh, there's no mouse enabled and so you need to use the up and down arrows and the enter key to uh, select your option. I'll select to boot to the live system. So this system is running Zorin OS entirely from the optical drive. Now that the system has started, let's look at the hard drive configuration. We'll go to the menu and then up to System Tools and Administration. The program we'll run is Gparted, the Partition Manager. Gparted is showing us the structure of the entire hard drive only a small amount of the space actually occupied by data. The rest of it's empty space and so we can go to partition then resize move. Now we're going to resize it. I'm going to take about half of the space and turn it into unallocated space so we'll put about 10 gigabytes after uh, the main part of the drive. And so Here's where the previous operating system lives and the unallocated space on the other side is where Zorin OS will be installed. Gparted hasn't actually done anything so we go to edit, apply all operations and then confirm. So now the uh, designated space on the drive is being moved and we can close and now you see this unallocated partition here and the partition that has our previous operating system which is flagged as a boot p partition this is where the uh, computer has the information for booting up so we'll exit that now We're still in the live system, so you start install Zorin OS. And we're given some options to work with here. Bear in mind you need to have almost 8 gigabytes of space to install the Zorin Core OS. We have 10, so we're good. A number of options. Install alongside the unknown Linux distribution, or in your case, probably Windows. Uh, you can replace the uh, original operating system, or you can do something else, which is more complex. We're not going to deal with that. Instead, we're going to create a dual boot system, and click Install. Next is to select our time zone. You can move the time zone thing to different places. We're choosing Denver because I'm in mountain time. What kind of keyboard do I have? I have one using English. And now here's the part where I set up my user account. First you type in your own name.
Okay, that's not actually my name. I'm putting a space here because we have like a first name and a last name. The next part is the computer's name. This is the name that will show up on your network. And then pick a username, that's a good one. And choose a password. I'm going to choose a password that's actually not very good but it's easy to remember. I don't recommend doing this. Oh, yes. While I am working with Zorin OS, it's a good idea to keep a written log of what it is that you've done. Uh, in particular, it's good to have written down your password because you don't have any good ways of recovering it. Once you have lost the password, then you don't have access to a number of the important functions on this computer. So definitely write it down someplace safe. Here are some other options about your login. I'm going to choose to log in automatically because I'm the only one who uses this computer. And now we're in some boring parts. This part actually takes a really, really long time. And you have to sit around and wait and wait. Um, I've compressed it a lot. Just so you know. All right, it's done. So now I can tell it to restart. Remember, the system that we're looking at is the system that's working off of the uh, optical drive. And so it's going to ask me to remove the installation medium, that is, remove the uh, DVD, and then press Enter. Here we go. Grub is what's called a bootloader. Uh, again, I need to use the up and down arrows. This part here, unknown Linux distribution, that's actually the original operating system I had on this computer. Uh, in your case, it would probably say Windows instead of unknown Linux. I'm going to choose to start with Zorin. Because it's on top, it's the default operating system now. Okay, notice that the desktop does not have the install Zorin OS uh, icon because we're running off of the hard drive now instead of the DVD. Down here is my username. I can click on the little gear to see some utilities like a, about this computer and so on. This is your network icon. It shows that I am uh, networking is enabled and I'm on a wired network. Let's see what those disks are like again. So, system tools, administration, and then gparted. Ah, now I need to type in my password. So it's a good thing I wrote it down. Running things that can modify the system will require that you uh, use your password, so keep it handy. So Gparted is scanning the disk. And there it is. So 10 gigabytes, which holds the original operating system. 
it's flagged as boot as before. Here's 10 gigabytes of an extended partition which contains within it the 9 gigabytes that is holding Zorin. It's only about halfway full. Uh, a swap partition, this is important. Um, it allows you to swap from memory and then a little bit of extra space. Zorin is going to ask about this backup thing. Um, let's see what that means. Okay, so I don't have automatic backups on. My backup location is on Ubuntu 1. This is a web service that is free. Um, they give you some cloud storage. I uh, am not going to deal with the backups right now. So now it's time to shut it down. I go to the power button and tell it to shut down. Let's see what happens. Very good. And so that's the end. I now have a dual boot system.